Welcome to Learning Mole. Today we are exploring addition for kids and we're really going to think about those different steps that your child might go through in order to understand addition and to apply it in a range of different situations. And we're going to look at number bonds. Now, number bonds are very key in the addition journey in that if they learn their number bonds to 10 at an early stage, they can actually apply them to a massive range of situations later on as problems get more challenging and calculations um, get a bit more um, meatier. So really when I talk about number bonds, I'm talking about number bonds or number facts and it's just those different combinations. I know there, there's lots of different names for them. Um, I know my children call them twin facts. It just it depends on what your child is exploring in school, um, but I've always called them number bonds. So 1 plus 9, 2 plus 8, 3 plus 7, 4 plus 6, 5 plus 5, and then obviously that reverse. Now what I'm saying about the reverse is very, very important because if your child actually learns those first five, they actually know the next five, which is really, really good. But children need to see that relationship between the reverse. So they need to see that 1 plus 9 is exactly the same as 9 plus 1. And this is another key part of addition to show children that actually addition can be done in any order. It doesn't matter which way around the numbers are, you will still get the same answer. And that's a very, very important um, point that children need to learn. So we've got these five, and then obviously these five are the reverse, but children do need to see that visually. They need to work practically on that to see that relationship. They won't maybe, some children will automatically see it. Other children will just need that concrete solution that they can actually work through to really deeply understand it. So you might want to use Lego if your child's interested in Lego. You might want to use Play-Doh, roll it up into little balls, use different colors. Um, but I've just drawn some little um, square X's on the board just to show you. And I basically just use colours. So I've done my calculation, 3 plus 7 equals 10. And I've shown them that 7 plus 3 is exactly the same. It equals 10. Lego is a great way to show that because you can do your three Lego bricks in yellow and then your 7 in a different colour and then reverse it. And the children will see very, very clearly that their towers are exactly the same size. So it is a, a really good tool for that. Um, I would say that that's really important because children can actually, once they see that relationship, they can begin to apply that as well in different contexts and different subjects or different um, problem solving. Um, number bonds need to be learnt by heart. Um, so there's lots of different ways that you can approach this. Um, years ago, obviously, it would have been very, very much based on rote learning. Um, today, we try to move away from that a bit and give children that practical um, that concrete mathematical chance opportunity to really really see what they're doing but also there's lots of fun little games and little activities that you can do for number facts as well so for example and um, we would play a game in our classroom a lot as a little chanting game so it's about coordination it's about rhythm but it's also about math so it's a really good way of just bringing all that together and basically it would go like this and um, we'd have uh, someone who is the leader and the leader would say a number out of our number one to 10. So they would say a number from one to 10. And then they would call out a person and they have to give them the, uh, the number that adds to it to get to 10. So basically you're just thinking about that relationship between the two numbers, that one plus nine always goes together to make 10. So the, the game goes a bit like this. So we clap our legs, so we say, and then we clap our hands and then me as a teacher would take the role initially and then I hand off that responsible role to other children who are a bit more confident with their number one. So it will go like this. I say one, John says, and they will say nine. I say six, Lisa says four. And if the child can't get it that quickly, because of course when you're only learning number bonds, they're not going to be able to recall it that way, that quickly you can keep on clapping. So everybody will just keep clapping and let them have some thinking time. And that is no problem. So it might be, I say one, Lisa says nine. So it gives her plenty of time. All the other children are involved in doing their clapping and keeping the rhythm. So there's no pressure on Mary there or Lisa to really think about that. And I would explain that before I start the game that the clapping is actually thinking time as well. So it's just a good way of um, really getting that mental um, recollection of those um, 
number bond and it's a fun little interactive way that the whole class can play. You can also um, set it for different levels. So if you know um, that a child is struggling with their number bonds and they need a little bit more practice, give them an easy one like five, five plus five, or 10, 10 plus zero, so that they feel that they're able to join in and they feel that they're actually able to um, answer the questions as well. And they will feel that positive sense in there too. So just the number bonds I would say are really key. Keep practicing them and think of fun alternative ways to practice them rather than just writing them out. Um, drawing pictures is also a nice way of exploring them. Um, but I, as I do say, they're really, really key. Um, and I would say that they do really need to be focused on and children really do need to learn them.